The good folks at Comics for Fun and Profit have been doing two episodes a week um, for quite some time now, and it's all thanks to, first of all, Jason, and second of all, our patrons, who allow us to add the space on our server, broadcast more, store more, share more with you listeners. I'm envious of those of you who have unlimited storage and media server capabilities. We, we pay for ours here at, at the C4FAP. It ain't cheap. We thank you so much for those of you who go to patreon.com slash comics fun profit and contribute at any level to say thanks, to say I want to be a part of your Slack channel conversations. I want to get exclusives. I want to get early access. I want to get ad free access. I want to get swag. I want to get some free stuff. Whatever your reasoning is, we appreciate it at any level because it does make a difference. So from the bottom of Kyle and I and Jason's heart, thank you for contributing. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle Andrew with your sneak peek at next week. Episode number 802 for comics originally coming out February 14th and February 15th. Don't forget to take your loved one to your comic book shop on Valentine's Day. <laughs> but before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book sh- uh, comic book release day, Drew, anything else going on in the world of comics? And you and I have plans to see a movie when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go to Ant-Man. Got our tickets already. We're ready to go. Yeah. Well, we will have watched it by this time next week. Mm-hmm. So we are excited about that. Um, and uh, first time back in the theater, maybe, <laughs> maybe for years for me. I'm trying to think if I if I went to anything mm. since COVID. I I had to, I had to have gone back for something, right? No, you didn't. We all decided that nothing was worth it. Did you go for anything? I have not. I've turned everybody down. Huh. All right. Well, Ant Man's doing it. Ant Man. Can't wait. Can't wait to get that popcorn. That's all you care about is food. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I was reading um, Brian Hibbs' uh, blog post, Tilting at Windmills. Um, do you know who he is? No. He is a comic book shop owner out in um, San Francisco. Uh, for a while, he had two or three shops, and um, he would just complain, basically, about the industry all the time. So kind of like us. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, usually, usually he's, like, way off base. Because, I mean, he's, he's in San Francisco, so he's got the highest rent. Yeah, it's not the would... real world. Yeah, it's not the real world. And um, I think... He closed his regular shop, and now he just has like a graphic uh, trades trade shop, basically. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really have monthlies as much. So I don't know. He doesn't really speak for the industry in my mind, but he usually has interesting things, and some of his takes are eerily similar to ours. You know, he was complaining about the uh, the Murder World miniseries. That's not a miniseries, a series of number ones. You know, mm-hmm. it, you know. So we agree with a lot of things. Um, but he was talking about uh, the glut of publishing today, and I just mm-hmm. there was a stat he put in there that I just wanted to see if you knew it. So, um, of the big two, Marvel and DC, um, they average blank number of covers per book. So they have so many variants per each book. Mm. So some might only have one, some might have ten. Um, who averages more, Marvel or DC? Interesting. I would say it's Marvel. I would have said that too. It is the other way around. Oh. DC has averages more covers per book than Marvel does. Um, now, what do you think that number is? So, what's the average Aggregate? number of variant covers per book for Marvel and or DC? It is four for DC. Okay. DC averages four four covers um, per every book, and Marvel um, averages three and a half. There you go. Nice. So, so pretty close. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 they're they're very close together. And I guess you know since Marvel publishes twice as much as 
DC. <laughs> That's what I was just about to say. It does make sense that maybe they yeah. they would have lower numbers, so they have less to. They have some smaller smaller stuff that they wouldn't necessarily put them on there. But I just thought that was a surprise. Yeah, it's more restraint from Marvel than I thought. I'm uh, I'm sure there's yeah. some weird thing where they're like, oh, they have these ten books, but they only put one cover out, and that just drags down the average. But yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, we got some good news for those of us who are enjoying the Poison Ivy uh, solo series over at DC. Um, that was originally a six-issue miniseries, and then it got extended for six issues. Um, and now it is going to become an ongoing. So hey. it was, was going to end, uh, then it got extended through the middle of the summer, and, and now it's just going to become an ongoing. So how cool is that? Very you cool. Know? You I like it when you books do that kind of thing and they continue to have like the of 12. So it'll be like book 62 of 12. As they continue on. <laughs> do they still do that? I've seen that before on something that got continuation. I always thought that was really cool. That is cool. And then we also have heard uh, there's the new Avengers writer is Jed McKay. I don't know if you, we knew that or not. It was uh, my Marvel's Transformers because it started as a four issue series and then eventually it was like episode eighty or issue oh, okay. eighty four of a four issue special series. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, Jed so, McKay, got gotcha, you. Sorry. So Jed McKay is taking over Avengers, um, which is going to get me back on an Avengers book. Hey. Um, at least I'll be trying it out. Um, the initial variant covers, which are like five, so <laughs> it kind of shows us that Marvel does does their share. Had uh, the lineup as. Captain Marvel leading Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Scarlet Witch, and Vision. So that's kind of a classic lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, so I might, if that's if that ends up being the actual lineup, that'd be kind of cool. And Jed McKay doing it, which would be kind of cool. I hope. Um, I don't know that I've, did he do did he do anything that that was a group that I liked. I'm trying to think. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, what was that other? Yeah, it was doing that scrawl book, that Inhumans book. Mm. It's not really, that's not really a group thing. Um, so I'm trying to think if he did do anything. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I want to check it out for sure. So I'll give it a shot. What's my shot? What should my shot be? How many should I give him? What's how long should his rope be? Uh, six. Yeah, I, I wouldn't give my mom six issues. <laughs> I wasn't liking it that much. No, maybe three. I'll try to. I'll try so to don't even let him finish a, uh, you know, uh, an entire framework. No, no, because okay. if if there's not enough meat in there, and and he's pretty good at making issues self-contained, so you get a good beginning, middle, end, and it's hopefully not going to be a like just a chapter uh, that doesn't really go anywhere. I'm hoping. We'll see though. You never know. So he's only got three to hook yet. Interesting. Yep, he's got three to hook me. Unless the first one is terrible. If the first one is just terrible, I'm probably going so to So really, he's second. got one. Wow, wow, wow. That's yeah. fair. But if, if but if the first two are average, I'll give him the third. But it better fi- It better be fire. I mean, it just better just knock my doors off. See, that's the problem. I don't like I don't like reading average comics. I can read an I can read a bad one. And I'd be like, oh, oops, you got me. I'm not reading any more of those. <laughs> but reading average and just hanging out with average books for a long period of time is a bummer. I don't do that anymore. I used to. I mean, some things were, were worth hanging on to the, the bitter end. Like? I mean, uh, uh, what was the, the shoot? Out West. Out West. Crap. Yes, the one where they were East heading out West. West. No. Crap. I can't think of things. Sacagawea and all that stuff. Oh, Manifest Destiny. Yeah, Manifest Destiny. Oi. Um, you're right. There might have been some average there might have been an average run in there that I that I did. Yeah, that's true. Um I guess I'm yeah, you're right. If you build up enough goodwill, I will ride write out your average <laughs> True will ride you to the bitter end. Yeah. <laughs> um, you had you have to have laid the groundwork. Correct, but you know, yeah, there's, you there's can't been... come out. It, you can't come out of the gate average. Hundred percent. Expect me to stick. Hundred percent. Yes, that's what I, mean. I. That I will give you. Okay. Thank you for allowing my opinion to be my own. 
<laughs> you may have an opinion, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. We did uh, Image last week, Marvel before that, DC. That means we're on mid-tier. And we'll start with Boom releases um, that are going to be coming out in April. So this is February previews for April on page 104 Ooh. of your previews. And what are we looking at here, Kyle? Sorry, I was looking at other things. I was trying to send you something and it didn't work. So, all right, heading back over that way now. We are looking at, well, well, we are looking at The Expanse. So, Dragon's Tooth, number one of a 12-issue series. Andy Diggle. Yeah, have you seen The Expanse? I have not. That's what I was just, yeah. I've heard good things, but I've, I've not been able to check that out. My wife has zero negative interest in sci-fi except mm-hmm. for Star Wars. Um, In, I, illustrated by Rubine or Rubine. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, five issues or $5 an issue. Hmm. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I should probably not watch this, yeah. read this because I haven't seen the show. I don't believe we will understand this. Yeah. But maybe we'll understand the seasons have teeth, number one. Yeah, there we go. There's meaning. the one I was looking for. Yeah, Dan Waters are doing the writing. Sebastian Cabral. And it's a, oh, $5 book with a $7 foil. Yeah. 32 pages. Oh, uh, man. It's for fans of Sandman, Miss Sandman Universe and the many deaths of Layla Starr. Ooh. Kind of like that. Yeah. It's a good combo. Uh, I, he has a, a little Constantine look to him. That's what I was thinking, just looking at it. I was like, yeah, yeah. there's kind of a... Vave and Ted, I think. Yeah, there's, very, there's a hole, a Constantine hole in the world right now, so I'll take that's it. True. If that's what it is. I was going to say, we may be being deceived here, yeah. or it may just be... You know, he's also got a camera. I don't think Constantine ever had a camera, but... Uh, yeah, Kyle just sent me a picture of Transformers number 80 in a four-issue limited series. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Oh, they're now already at hardcovers on our third offering from our good friends at Boom, and that is the Coda Deluxe Edition. Cy Spurrier is the reason I even talked about it. Yeah, lots of trades. It's weird because the the solicit doesn't have a picture until the second page, so. We go trade, 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 then we go back to House of Slaughter 14. Yeah. And Something is Killing the Children's Slaughter Pack, number five, which is what? Slaughter bag. Uh, 21 through 25. James. That is a really good looking cover, though. So I cannot get mad at that. Those are all David Max, aren't they? Matea, or for the House of Slaughter, 14? No, for the Slaughter Packs. Sorry, I was like, yes, that one. Yes, that's that's correct on those. Uh, the story arc for Grimm, the second story arc is finishing up. I'm not going to say it's the final issue because it wasn't back on issue five. So mm-hmm. there you go. Stephanie Phillips keeps going. The Neighbors number two. And Jude Ellison S. Doyle. Got some cool Stephanie Hans. And a and Zoo Orza. I like that one too. Nice. Yeah, the incentive cover there. Yeah. Justin Jordan's Harrower, I believe that was an FOC pick of yours, or perhaps yep. a sneak peek pick. I can't remember. Harrower. 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 Rob Guillory's Mosley. Uh, know Your Station finishes up with issue five. Um, the conclusion of that so- series. And then we get, we're, we're into the, the final issue of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Ah, oh, the combo, yeah. But Mighty Mighty Morphin's regular comic is out issue one oh seven. Yeah. That's great. Like going back to legacy. And then a go go Power Rangers. Okay. And the magic is still going, and that's my boy mm-hmm. too. But it's it's the final issue. Which is gonna free it's the him final up to do... issue with thirty pages of story. So I wonder if they're going to <laughs> next is next twenty nine pages. 29. <laughs> this is the final issue with twenty nine issues. Of story. God, it's a seven dollar book. Yeah, Does so it come with a card? Yeah. <laughs> you get better. magic cards in it. You should. You better. Uh, Dune. Dune. <clears throat> Buffy. 
And that is all we have from our good friends at Boom. So we're just going to quickly head on down to that Dark Horse. Pretty thin. Very thin. Pretty thin. Very thin. Where we get Hairball number one from Matt Kent with Tyler Jennings. I Jenkins. think helping on art. You're right. <laughs> Tyler Jennings. It's a kid I knew from college. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tyler Jenkins doing art. And Hillary Jenkins doing a cover as well. <laughs> I think they are actually <laughs> a brand new supernatural nightmare. That's Junji Ito meets Hayomo Mi- uh, Miyazaki from the <laughs> interesting. That doesn't they're help even... me at all. Yeah, they're they're giving creators now instead of actually. You know, I know what a Miyazaki film is. I don't know what an Ito film necessarily is. I'll top my head. I have to look it up. Judge Ito from the OJ trial. <laughs> yes, the dancing Itos. You remember those? Yeah. Okay. A young girl with a black cat begins to suspect uh, the innocuous beast is behind all of her troubles, her parents fighting, family plagues, and innumerable supernatural horrors. As she tries her best to rid herself of this creature, she discovers that maybe the cat is not evil after all, and a greater terror may be behind these horrific events harming her. Yeah. It's the cat. What's a little more my speed is the great british bump off number one because it is a murder mystery and it's an agatha christie style murder mystery oh. but it's set in an english competition competitive baking now that's uh, something your wife will let you watch yeah i don't i don't like that so much but <laughs> mm, i do like the mystery aspect i'm curious um should i wait for a trade on this or should i read it as it comes out I would wait for nothing on this. <laughs> of course, you don't probably like this art. Well, style. I mean, check the art. It looks all ag as AF. John Allison isn't all ag though. Normally, okay. do you not think that looks all ag? It definitely does. It definitely. That's does. all I was saying. I wasn't saying it was all ag. But I did read a lot of issues of Fence, if you recall, which was. I do. AG. Yes, you. That wasn't your volleyball. That was your fencing phase. Uh, all eight eyes, number one. It's a four-issue miniseries by Steve Fox, Peter Kowalski. I like to call him Foxy. Do you? He's got an E at the end of Fox. I like it. Yeah. Hey, Foxy. Jaws meets arachnophobia. Okay. That, feature feature terror. That intrigues me. That's like uh, one of Kevin Smith's last movies he's going to make. It's called Moose Jaws. It's Moose meets Jaws in Canada. Man, eek. <laughs> I like this. It looks good. I don't know this next thing. I'll just say trade of some sort. So it's Trackers Presents the Adventures of Captain Nick and the Explorer Society. May have been something that's out that I missed or forgot about. Yeah. Another trade, Fafrid and the Grey Mauser. Uh, then we go back to Scott Snyder and Francis Manipole doing Clear, which was another one of your picks mm-hmm. last week. That looks interesting. Scott Snyder. A mm-hmm. couple more trades. Uh, some Star Wars stuff. Yeah, High Republic Adventures Volume One, High Republic Adventures: The Nameless Terror, three of four issue series, and then uh, six of eight for High High Republic Adventures. Um, Not goals. even showing us the cover. That's a good idea. Good uh, good call. Maybe there'll be something creepy in there. And Hyperspace Stories hits issue. But they're telling a Boba Fett story, so that one will sell well. They're not really mining this license for as much. I no, have... I would have I would have Star Wars as the very first item at, at a Dark Horse. I, I would be faking it till I make it. Like, look at how amazing these stories are. Even if they're not, just saying that, and they're not doing it. Unless they have, like, very... Maybe they're only allowed to publish two. You're allowed to publish this one and this one, and that's it. <sighs> Is that possible? No. Well, I mean, it's possible, obviously, because, yeah, yeah, who knows? But, I mean, I would be pulling some people off some of this other shit and be cranking them out if I had. Yeah. I would, Tim Seeley would have himself a Star Wars book <laughs> instead of Masters of the Universe 3 of 4. There's, <laughs> you know, kidding. Uh, yeah, cancel that and mm-hmm. do more Star Wars. But, you know, we do complain about that, you know, when it, when. DC does half their books as Bat Family books. Correct. But for we think Dark Horse should mine that gold because they need they need propped up. 
So, you know, they're doing Bat Family in, in lieu of other really good superheroes, whereas Dark Horse is doing not Star Wars in lieu of Masters of the Universe 3 and 4. Yeah. So there's a, there's a bit of a difference. Yeah. Or random words that don't mean make any sense together and is a Zaki meets. Yeah, detail. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I get you. Blue Book 3 of 5, James Cindy in the fourth, um, his $5 series. Ooh, with a Cliff Chang cover. Mm. Ironically enough, it's called Blue Book, and each cover is blue. Lean into that. Where Monsters Lie, three of four. This is Kyle Starks and Peter Kowalski. Peter Kowalski's busy. These are some creepy covers. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jim Starlin and Rags Morales do an order and outrage. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. I missed right. that one last yeah. month. Yeah. Um, some more trades. I forgot Minor Threats was a Patton Oswald book. It's getting a trade. Koshe in Hell finishes up with its fourth of four. That's a Mignola verse book. So is Young Hellboy Assault on mm-hmm. Castle Death. Quick Quick Stop gets its hardcover. Kevin Smith joint. What's that? Four issues and they're making a hardcover out of? Yeah. I think so. Uh, Assassin's Apprentice penultimate five of six, and Space Job penultimate three of four. Samurai Satire finishes with its fourth, and we collect the Resident Alien trade, which is volume seven. Yeah. I was thinking it was volume five, so yeah, it's, it's done way more volumes than I thought. Cool. Dead Mall gets collected as a trade. Air Volume 3 gets collected as a trade. I don't remember that one. It's a burger book. How, do, how did that one slip through my radar, I wonder? G. Willow mm. Wilson, too. Collected Eerie. Collected Empowered. Past Tense. <laughs> None of this stuff is making me stop scrolling. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. No. Us Trade Paperback. The Art of the Cuphead Show. Captain Laser Hat. Hawk. Critical Role, Plants and Zombies, World of Assassin. There's a lot of stuff here. They, mm-hmm. they seem to have a lot more volume than Boom. Dragon Age finishes up with its issue four. Skull and Bones is two of three. I I, I hate to be um, a stickler, but I kind of like my publishers to show me all their new stuff, mm-hmm. all their ongoing stuff, and, and then, then all their trades. trades. Then yep. all their trades. I don't I don't like this back and forth action. Let's slide on another dynamite, which I, notoriously disappointing yeah. <laughs> for me. But, but uh, we are starting a with a Disney book, extra sized for three ninety nine. Another good thing I like, and we have Disney villains Scar number one. Of course, Scar from the Lion King franchise. Extra size, what thirty two pages, and at least four of those are going to be ads. Well, it's really not that big of a deal, but okay. That's a lot of covers, though. Dang. Yeah. They call it an extra size story. It's still only 32 pages with ads, 27 pages of story. That's not over extra sized, if you ask me. No, I don't. I don't believe though. So. That's what I'm saying. But they are offering a hundred dollar metal premium cover and a fifty dollar virgin cover and sixty five other covers. I don't understand that. So weird. It's but yeah, Disney there's... property and Disney people are crazy. Yeah, that's true. I mean. They're putting some marketing behind it. Mm-hmm. Art looks good. We're relaunching 007 again. Thought we, we are just 70 did years of 007, so we got to celebrate the 70th anniversary there. Didn't we just do one with Philip Kennedy Johnson? Not that. I guess we're just going to relaunch every every arc as a new number yes. one. Can't. I can't. If you go away for a while and come back and you want to give me a number one okay i'll allow it but it's just if it's a series of mini series because you're scared of an ongoing <laughs> i don't know lots of hardcover james bond though lots of say, stuff we're bringing back 70 years of all these series that you hated <laughs> i don't know that i hated them they were average all these number ones back yeah. again yeah that is a lot of volumes of uh james bond Mm-hmm. Gargoyles on issue five now. Yeah. 
It's 32 pages, not extra sized. Dynamite may be winning with the number of covers above the big two because, boy, oh, yeah. everything that they're at is at 50. Higher. Yeah. I would like to see what that number is. I get they've got to be close to double digits on average number of covers. Mm-hmm. Deja Thoris, Karma, which is an original graphic novel. Miss Fury looks a lot like Catwoman. It does. <laughs> Elvira, uh, The Boys, Barbarella. This is issue three. Great covers. Who are yeah, the, that's what I was thinking. Who are the covers? Derek, I guess that's Derek Chu. Mm-hmm. Who's on the interior? Or Ricardo Bagani. Yeah, not, not quite as good as Derek Chu. And we don't know much about Barbarella, right? No, we don't. Ever watched the movie? Or was it a series? Was it a movie? It was a movie, right? Sounds right. Never read any of the comics, so just give me a chance to. I think I'll check it out. Purgatory Must Die, Mad Balls and Garbage Pail Kids, Sweetie Candy Vigilante. Doesn't say that's ending. This Mm -mm. is number five. Must be an ongoing. Emperella Strikes. They know what their niche is, and they just um, lean into it, you know? There you go. That's it. That's it for mid tiers, man. Yep. Let's head over to CBSI and see what they've got going on. Yeah, of course, CBSI is a good friends at comicbookinvest.com. We click on their top 10 and look at what their prior week's top 10 is because we don't get the new one yet. So let's head on over and see that the number one book for the secondary market run for them is The Authority, number one by Warren Ellis. $70 for Raw. CGC 9.8 is going for $500. This is definitely a first. Marvel shut out, and all books on the list are DC. Wow. Like this group or not, like James Gunn or not, what happened here this week is definitely a spark to the hobby. Maybe at the exact time we needed. This one came out of left field, so the knee-jerk reaction is not surprising, but likely less sustainable. Of course, James Gunn came out and gave the future of the DCU. Right. And people said, hey, uh, I want to be part of that and ran for it. At rank two, Batman 655. 9.8 is going for over $400. 9.6 is going for over 150 Having a good Robin story on screen is awesome. Having a Damian Wayne good story is even better. Batman has always received the gold treatment, but the Bat family deserves some on-screen love too lately. You know what we need to do is... Um... When when was the James Gunn announcement? And then take all these books and review their sales in the two or three days before the James Gunn announcement to see who mm-hmm. had leaked, yeah, who, and, and who had who had been gobbling this stuff up before it it was announced, yeah, and then and then and then go out and kill them. <laughs> Wait, it's our senators, just like the stock market. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the same senators that shorted air, airplane stocks at 9-11. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> at rank three, we have Action Comics 1051, the Lauren Lu variant. Over $100 for the trade debt dress, $125 for the $1,500, 15 limited copy Virgin, uh, and $150 to $175 on the foil. The one book that is not DCEU related, sort of. I think Power Girl might show up at some point, but this is selling for two reasons and only two reasons. Are they talking about her boobs? Yes. Uh, hilarious. Yes, they are. At rank four, we have Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, number one from Tom King. Uh, 30 to $40. Gunn said this story would specifically be used, but that has both. That has happened many times before, and the luster wears pretty quickly on stories that are used for film. Tread lightly on this one. At rank five, we have Stormwatch, number four. Warren Ellis writing this. Rolls over $100. This has always been one to pick up for cheap, and high-graded copies are tough with this all-black spine. 
authority has taken up several spots in the, the list this week. And I think it's just because it is the biggest surprise of all the James Gunn announcements. It is. Yeah. At rank six, Weird War Tales, number 93. I'm not sure of a date on that one, but that's a, it's an old book. Uh, 9.8s are over $1,100. They were just 700. 9.0s for 175. We're seeing moves. And Rawls are going for over $100. Not sure how well a team first will hold up. See things like the Suicide Side Squad. Uh, that is not the big three Avengers, Justice League, or Team Titans. But hey, who knows? Creature Commandos, yeah, I have, I have very little interest in that. Yep, Creature Commandos, number one from two thousand twenty dollars. The one title that is already in production, surprisingly, <laughs> it will have actors' voices that can be translated into live action. But in the end, it's still just a cartoon. But Invincible and Miles have been in cartoons, and look what they did for the industry. Yeah, it's true. At rank eight, Booster Gold number one, nine point eight seven hundred dollars. I'm intrigued by a Booster Gold movie. There are many different directions this could go, but I think it is most likely to have a Deadpool feel to it. In any case, there are a lot of Booster Gold fans, which is surprising considering his titles never really do great. At rank nine, we have Stormwatch number thirty-seven. Warren Ellis writing this, fifty to sixty dollars. The first Jenny Sparks and Jack Hawksmore. With a print run of around only twenty four thousand is not the easiest to find, especially for mid range mid or I'm sorry, mid nineties image books. People are going insane for these authority books. And at rank ten, Legends number one, Rawls going for ten to fifteen, nine point eight for over hundred and seventy five. Make no mistake, there are a million copies of this book out there. If you believe in Amanda Waller, I would only go for nine point eights and preferably a newsstand or Canadian price variant. The census will grow the next year on this book, and you don't want to be stuck with it. So this is uh, first Amanda Waller? Yeah. Wow. At uh, the honorable mention spot, we have Grant Morrison's Batman number 656. 9.8 to $300 to $400. 9.6 is for a one fifter. Damien again, this pseudo first full appearance used to be more sought after than 655. It appears to have caught up in value again. You get a fight over what's the real Damien first appearance, Drew. You love that. Uh, I love those, yeah. And the other honorable mention, the Sait number four, an oldie but a goodie, a real old one here. CGC 4.5 went for two grand. Yet another gorgeous Matt Baker cover. This one showcasing the always collectible full moon background. Yeah, Matt ba- Baker covers are just fantastic. Yeah. They're just really great. I'll never own any, but they're really nice. <laughs> Unless I get lucky, stumble across something. Time for a break from our show to pay the bills. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 fap links you could ever need all in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and pre-order list. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the c4 fap links you could ever need thanks back to the show speaking of getting lucky you guys are lucky that drew and i are going to go over the foc with you guys we're going to look at our final order cutoff items and see what we can find that we need to add to our orders see if there's anything we think the market's heading towards and jump to it we are heading over to our good friends at lunar distributions to look at some of our DC related items. I have my awesome little order form I get from Cowabunga Comics and Deep Discount Comics to check out my price guides for all the handy stuff for my ordering I need. Um, but let's start with our DC stuff that's due on Sunday and see what we find from a bunch of Superman books. 
Yep, yeah, um, we're gonna do some more adventures of Superman John Kent. Um, just a chance for once again um, me to, to whine and cry. I was reading the new action comics, and they introduced um, a couple of young kids that uh, <laughs> Superman and Lois are going to adopt, and it grinded my gears because we had we went through John Kent being a nice nine ten year old kid and what a fun family dynamic comic book that was then we let bendis come in and destroy that with it aging him up Mm -hmm. and we all knew it was a mistake everybody who loves comics said that's a mistake don't do that they won't admit it's a mistake and retcon it and fix it so just keeping john aged up and but they but they know people liked that story better than they like these stories. So they're going to introduce new kids to replace John Kent. And um, I won't, I can't be manipulated like that. You know, you, you can. I probably will read, but it makes me mad. It makes me mad, Kyle. You know what they should have done? Said, oops. The, that that aging up thing was wrong and we're going to he's going to go through the wormhole backwards and he's going to be a kid again and we're just going to pretend like it never happened that's what they should have done mm. they should have done this has been talking super kids with drew you yeah. agree with drew let him know everybody liked everybody liked super sons everybody yes super sons was fun i don't know mm-hmm what else is phenomenal is Batman 133, the Jorge Menace cover A with Batman digging his own grave. Oh, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. Oh, we got Art Germ doing a Joker. I don't know if I've seen that before. Derek Chu looking a lot like um, yeah. Romeo <laughs> there. Channeling his inner, yeah. And yeah, that, that, is, that is one of the few Art Germs that doesn't look Art Germy. Yeah. And then we got... Uh, 357, Batman 357 facsimile. I don't like know. that. I don't know Old who that is. facsimile cover. What is the deal? Uh, the squid? The first squid? <laughs> okay. This facsimile edition reprints the first cameo appearance of Jason Todd and includes oh. all the original ads from 1983. Jason Todd, okay. But you're getting a facsimile blank variant. That's pretty cool. Okay. What, what what are you doing with what are you doing with that? What do you think? What are you doing with your facsimile blank? Is it are you gonna go hmm, you're gonna get a Jason Todd sketch on it, I guess? Heck yeah. Okay. All right. Man, I'm actually excited about the Batman and Ra- the uh the trade for that Grant Morris and Frank Wyatley Batman and Robin Rudd. Oh come on. You gotta let that well, go. I, I keep talking to people that I hope I hope this is where we end up at some point in time. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I haven't read that. And I just want to hand them this. Also, I should probably reach out to Eric. And I would like a 9.8 of this, not the actual first issue of that. At some point, I talk about that book so much. I think I have to own it. You probably should. I thought you yeah. did. Not encapsulated. Oh, you mean you want a slab. Gotcha. Yeah. The end of the Gotham Knights Gilded City video game covers been very cool um we get the video game cardstock cover c which is a landscape version it's cool shows a lot of the characters and the neat stuff there so that's pretty awesome yeah the last batman one to one bad day i think is that this is the last one um another another book that's actually a mini series mm-hmm. but it's a series of number ones i it's love cool. love love the bruno redondo one in 50 cover i wondered if you'd like that it's very stylized so that's good. cool I think I also just don't like the ratio, the balding ratio ghoul on the cover of these. So that's the one that doesn't yeah. have that. Reprint some booster gold stuff. Yeah, let's pull that out. Uh, DC Power of Celebration. That's the second printing of that. DC's Legion of Bloom one shot. Derek Chu, you're a genius. Which one is his? Cover B for Legion of Bloom. Oh, nice poison ivy cover. Yeah. Some flash. What do we have a second printing of? We have a second printing of DC Power A Celebration. That's the chick book. 
Do we think we... Yeah, um, it's the Black History Month book. Did we get an that's official cool. Flash release date? No, I think we did that the other day, too. I think it was like... I thought we did. It was like October, November, maybe. Like nine years after the initial announcement. <laughs> they were going to make one. Gotham City Year One, number six of six, cover C, one in 25. Um, DC's doing their window blinds covers. Yeah, what the heck, man? <laughs> I think I think they're just they're uh, they're joshing them on that one. <laughs> they might be. They might be. If you, yeah, this is how you do a window blinds cover. Yeah, that's right. It's a great cover, though. Look at that classic movie poster, man. That's just the Jorge Molina. It's so good. Do not even look at Joker, the man who stopped laughing. Number six, cover B. Lee Bermejo. It's just nightmare fuel. Is he um holding his own? Do he's his suturing own his own wounds oh, while he's dressed as a surgeon. Well, what's with... Kendrick Kunka doing? That one's pretty creep as well. Jeez. My God, this is people are the they just, Yeah, they're like, hey, just go ice cream man on these covers. You got yeah. You. Every twisted thought you ever had, put that into this cover. Let it pour out. Another Lazarus Planet. I did read a single Lazarus Planet book. That Lazarus Planet Revenge of the Gods cover D, the one in 50 Daniel Samprey foil. I can see that making some money. That Wonder Woman. Oh, the one in 50. Yeah. Milestone gets a 30th anniversary special. Monkey Prince finishes up with issue 12. Um, so not, in these 12 issues, what have you learned about the monkey prince? I only read the first two. Okay. It said not for me. And, uh, don't feel bad about it. Nightwing 100 gets a second print. Second print. Two the second one in 25 and the cover A. I like it. And I do like that Dan Moyer one in 25 second print. That's pretty nice. You, you can't go wrong with Dan Mora. Uh, Jenny Frizen and... Doing her uh, poison ivy along with I Josh like Middleton. the Josh Middleton better. It's very nice. I can't blame you. One of the many reasons why that poison ivy is going to be an ongoing. Yep. They really invested in the right cover artists. <laughs> it's true. Superman Lost number one. The Joe Casada cover B is a very good cover as well. Yeah. Classic. You reading it? Nope. Superman, I, I'm going to have to be forced to read a Superman. I'm, somebody's yeah. going to have to pull a Superman book and say, hey, I've read this. You'll like it. Go ahead and give it a shot. Like I'm, that American Alien? Exactly. You need one of those, yeah. Swamp Thing Green Hell finishes up. Uh, let's see, three issues, three years to complete, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, I'm excited. I've forgotten what the other two were about, but Sure. Let's finish it up. Funny. Waller versus Wild Wildstorm launches. Um Godspeed to this book. <laughs> Let me know. Now Ow. Swamp Thing Green Hell came out in twenty twenty two. Okay. Well, it's February three of issues. 2020. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's, it's been a year. year. I've been a year for three issues, man. <laughs> one year for three issues. Actually, uh, issue two has not come out. <laughs> Just issue one. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is not coming out until later. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. All right, let's see what our friends at Image have for us. Hmm. Come on, Image. One shot for Ark. A Spawn sketch cover for 339 that is a... Blank template. I actually very much like that, if that's what that actually looks like. Emma Kubert's Stro- Stoneheart. Not Strongheart. Stoneheart. Mm. If I had time, I'd click through it. I want to see what the art looks like inside. There you go. It's possible that might be okay. Don't know if she's had her own book, has she? Mm-mm. Uh, nothing from Boom. I did read the uh, Once Upon a Time... At the end of the end of of the world, number one from Jason Aaron and man, he just does great creator own stuff. I really liked it. it it's post post apocalyptic, of course. So oh my, f- uh, my other favorite. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Only a few things from Dark Horse. Yeah. Uh, second space job, fourth Assassin's Apprentice, and the final Spy Superb. 
IDW is giving us uh, four Dead Sea, number four for, of Dead Seas. They're giving us an all AG Dungeons and Dragons book. In is it a Saturday, first? Mor- Saturday Morning Adventures Dungeons and Dragons. It's not a first issue, is it? It is a number one. Oh, wow, cool. That'd be interesting. Yeah, see how that goes. Here, kids, get hooked on D&D. Yeah. Yeah, Bishop, Bishop, we're at War College down from uh, Marvel. Hellcat launches with its first issue. I liked um, some of these covers on Hellcat. You Mama skipped Moko. by some of our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ongoing. Did I? Yeah, because the, the Pharaoh Poe cover A is very, very good on the issue 138. And then we actually have the art for the Sophie Campbell, Kevin Eastman cover B. And I think I like it even better. It's hmm. very cool. I don't know, man. I, th- I really like this Hellcat in Yuck Lee. Yes, definitely. I think they're all pretty darn good, though. Mm-hmm. Even the Scotty Young is adorable. Even the Scotty Young. Hulk 13 with the classic homage of the reflection in the claws. A bit overdone, but well done. And they really missed the... um. With the Scotty Young cover, it should have been Heck Cat. Really, <laughs> yeah, they really missed they really missed their chance there. <laughs> Sins of Sinister number one going to a second print, but they're not giving us the cover that it made it go to a second print. <laughs> oh wow, really? Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, I guess keep this keep that thing scarce. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you already did what a hundred one in a hundred version of that yep. cover too. Yep. Yeah, don't milk it too much. Man, I love Star Wars Yoda number five, the David Messina cover of Yoda just chilling with a cup of coffee. By that <laughs> is that what he's doing? He is just chilling with the force, man. That is a nice cover. <laughs> That's yeah. more of a tree cover with a little Yoda thrown in there. That is awesome. <laughs> and Peach Momoko's version of Yoda, if that's what that is, I disagree with. She has made him a dinosaur. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> has she never seen a Star Wars? <laughs> I think I think that's gay air, because they've actually placed his name on there, so we don't run into that problem again. But it still made me oh, laugh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who that is. So. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Dynamite folks, a lot of Deja Thoris. What do you think of the excellent number one cover, the Rico, but the one and a zero are not an I and an O? Oh. Oh, no, I hate that. Oh, you I don't, hate it. Okay, I wasn't sure. I mean, you you like Leet Speak? I know, mm-hmm. I hate the name. I like the, the covers, actually. Oh, okay. Bad. I thought you were asking me about him as an artist. No, no. I was asking about both the, the douchey name and, the, the I yeah. think, a good cover. Yes. Especially, I, like, when you put it next to an all-red cover, you're just like, oh, there's no way I'm getting that. I'm going to do the, the Leap Speak yeah. guy. I gotcha. It is pretty good. I'm not as anti-all-red as you, but... Hey, you know, I respect him. I give him his propers. It is not for me. All the Devils Are Here, number one, from Scout Comics, about an elderly dementia patient. Oh, <laughs> jeez, what an uplifting book. Well, he does become possessed by a powerful demon. <laughs> but he can't remember where he put his keys. Uh, yeah, but maybe the devil can. <laughs> Children of the Black Sun, number three, has the uh, Giant Size X-Men homage cover. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Yep. Nice. Why is De- Deja Thoris here as well? Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. Dyn- is D- is Dyn- Dynamic Entertainment and Dynamic Forces and Dynamite all one big conglomerate? Yes. We keep seeing this Quested book have these dope video game covers from the old right. old Zelda games. Yeah. Um, we are in Macarena of Time, so that is of course the Ocarina of Time homage on their cover D. Very well done. Yeah, they've got uh, they've even got the uh, the rumble pack description from the because this is essentially mock it. It is aping the instruction manual and it even says designed for the the W64 jiggle pack instead of the N64 rumble pack. You love that. You I are, do like you're, it. You're loving that. Toy number one from Keen Spot. 
is, uh, as you might guess, very all agey. Mm-hmm. But they're from the creators of Sumerian's Paranormal Hitman, which is my Bible. But it's a, it's an it's an all ages toy. Drew, we've gone most of the way. It looks like through our FO saying this is where I say, hey, buddy, tell me what you got for me. Man, oh, man, I'm on the fence, but I'm going to go with the Inhyuk Lee Hellcat. Hey, one. very nice. That leaves me Emma Kubert's Stoneheart from Image Comics. Okay, okay. That was my number two. So There we go. I just assumed you'd steal it from me, but you did not. I almost Thanks. did. Almost did. I would make like three weeks in a row you've stolen my episode. Yeah, it would. I'm glad, glad you, you let me go first still. <laughs> All right, Drew, what else I'm going to let you do is I'm going to let you follow me over to our good friends at CoverPrice.com, where we're going to see what their top 10 things are on the secondary market. Um, After, of course, the DCU announcement by James Gunn, I think we know what a lot of this stuff is going to be, but let's check it out and start with the first one, of course, The Authority from 1990. 9 DC. This gritty book went from obscurity to the limelight overnight. Many wondered who the authority was, and a little googling filled them in on this very violent squad, often compared to the boys. That should probably tell you something. This book features the first team appearance of the authority. So, 77 copies of this wow. book sold, Drew. Nice. $550 for CGC 9.8, and you're getting Rawls for about 33 bucks and very fine. Pretty nice. But yeah, that's the one to get. At rank two, we have Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, number one. Of course, we heard this one specifically shouted out, this Tom King storyline. Um, that gave fans a solid heads up. And the option to skip right over her first appearance, which is a little pricey in Action Comics 252 in the modern storyline. So just a heads up on that as well. But we tracked 75 copies of this uh, Woman of Tomorrow, number one. CGC 9.8 still just affordable at 70 bucks, um, and you're finding some very fines for 37, um, so not bad. And then there is a Gary Frank cover of this same book, um, where we saw $60 for CGC, CGC 9.8s and about five bucks cheaper on near mint, uh, fair market value. At rank four, we have Batman 655 from 2006. People love Damian Wayne. His no-holds-barred form of justice often blurs the lines between sheer brutality and wanting to be a hero like his father. This book features his first cameo appearance, Drew, with his face partially revealed in two panels, dialogue, and a fully shadowed appearance on the last page next to his mother. Okay? Keep that in mind, Drew. In the popular cameo versus first appearance debate, this book's cameo appearance won the battle in both volume and price. 135 issues on the secondary market, 500 bucks for a CGC 9.8 copy, and near Mint Rawls for 79. Why is this not number one? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I thought if you're moving 135 copies, it would be the thing. Yeah. Um, I think they're... uh, they're putting them in kind of their order of what you should get as well. Maybe. And right after that in rank number five, we have Batman 656. Another major announcement, Gum Wade, was from the play for the Bowl featuring Bruce Wayne and Damian Wayne's center story. Damian, a character fans have been dying to see portrayed on the big screen, is noted in Gunn's favorite Robin. <gasps> Gunn's favorite Robin isn't Tim Drake? What? Well, However, it's the important. world's favorite. Oh, I'm sorry. That's correct. However, it's important to note that Gunn didn't clarify if Damien would take the mantle of Robin. Upon hearing the news, many immediately visited the aftermarket, acquiring this first full appearance, Drew, or debated second cameo of Damien, who fully appears on the last page of this issue. 101 copies sold, 420 for 9.8, $72 for alls. Wow. So which one do you want to get? You get six Neither. Six, uh, Either I want to. F- I don't like either one of those. Let's say I'm handing you. I'm giving you a book, and you have to choose which one do you want. I want the. F- I want a full look at him. You Let's want six fifty six. You heard it here first. Six fifty six. Yeah. Not a partial Eric's... shadow. <laughs> but he speaks. Can you have a, a cameo if you speak? 
Anyways, yeah, at rank six, right. we've we've had this debate thirty five times. Legends number one from 1986, one of the few holdovers from the DCU shakeup, is Amanda Waller, played by by Viola Davis. It was announced she would be receiving her own TV series, and fans are excited to see a sliver of the old DCU sneak into the new slate. They decided to secure her first appearance, as it appears Gunn and DC have more in store for them her, for her. Sixty eight copies sold. $145 for CGC 9.8 copies and nine bucks for a very fine. Yeah. Pick them up. Gobble yeah. them up. At rank seven, Booster Gold, number one from 1985. This is the first appearance of Booster Gold. <gasps> Don't need to tell you anything else there. $649 for CGC 9.8, $64 for oh. very fine. Had so many of these. Oh my God. <laughs> at number eight, Weird War. Tales 93, the Newstown version from 1980. The Creature Commandos announcement was a surprise in the DC slate, yet Gunn habitually takes the obscure and turns them into mainstream gold. See things like Peacemaker and Guardians of the Galaxy. Collectors needed to learn more about the team, and the information online pointed them towards the Commandos' first appearance in this book. However, Gunn shared a preview image that doesn't feature any of the characters who, do, who debuted in this book. Elliot Taylor, a.k.a. Patchwork, Vincent Velcro, Vampire, Warren Griffith, Werewolf, and Lieutenant Matthew Shreve, leader of the Commandos. The characters that were shown have first appearances scattered amongst multiple books. Check our last week's market report that breaks these things all down. So head on over and uh, check out some more things from oh, cover ten, price. For ten that. copies of this sold. Come on. <laughs> How is this in the top ten? I don't Which, even uh, Drew's bearing the lead and uh, jumping right over what I was going to read next. Ten copies sold <laughs> over a thousand dollars for CGC 9.8 and very fine for 35 bucks. At rank nine, we have Stormwatch number four from 1998. Stormwatch was initially published by Image before coming under the banner of DC. And it appears a team of heroes who flew mainly under the radar yet delivered more adult retribution than their DC counterparts. So, as announced, the Authority is getting a big screen treatment with fans opting to secure first appearances of very significant players. This book is a draw due to featuring the first appearances of the Midnighter and Apollo and future members of the team. 27 copies. 600 bucks for CGC 9.8, $129 for alls. And rank 10, Swamp Thing number one from 1972. The community was incredibly disappointed when the 2019 Swamp Thing TV series on the now dissolved DC Universe streaming service was canceled before it even finished season one. But this is better. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is one of the more expensive books outside of Swamp Thing's first appearance, which is, of course, House of Secrets 92. Fans are opting to grab this before it begins. Begos- becomes even higher tracking 24 copies six hundred dollars for cgc 9.2 so we don't know 9.8 current prices and 141 dollars for near mints hmm interesting yeah now you can read drew thank you i can read anytime i want i know even when i'm in the middle of a solicit it's weird well you were getting there at like 11 we have all-star superman number one this is uh 28 dollars for alls (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> 56 of these moved um i believe it's 28 dollars for a raw so that's not bad uh i remember all star superman I'm, i know i have a couple of these land dust them off man mm-hmm. uh batman 657 comes in at rank 12 um with three popular iterations of robin preceding damian wayne it's now his time to shine um Jameson calls his favorite Robin, exciting to explore. And this is his, this book is his second appearance. And this is actually his first full appearance, first cover appearance, first in a Robin. Um, 71 copies sold, high of 224, CGC 98. This one will end up being the one to have. The cover but, appearance? Yes, the first cover. Um, those two, Those two cameos can suck it. At rank 13, we have Batman Battle for the Cow 3. It's a Damien comic, which is his first f- official appearance as Robin. Oh, he does not appear on any of the covers. Collectors tend to favor the cover B of this year's I- this year issue. There's only 10 copies of this sold with a high sale of 30 for a raw. Uh, Batman and Robin number one. Oh, you know this one, Kyle. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so here's what you're gonna have to put down for this. Twenty dollars for raw. It doesn't give us any nine eight. <laughs> exactly. Versus. Golly, geez. Thirty seven copies sold. Tell me what I can get a raw <laughs> nine point eight four on that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Batman six fifty five. Kubert one in ten from two thousand six. More Damien. This one sold twenty seven copies with a high sale of five eighty nine for a CGC nine eight. Uh, rank 16, we have Batman 666 from 2007. Um, the first appearance of Damien as Batman. Um, then we go uh, also Professor Pig in here was his first cameo. This is 37 copies selling, a high sale of 300 bucks for a CGC 98. At rank 17, we have Seven Soldiers from uh, Frankenstein number three from 2006. Like Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein appears in various other ways before this issue. However, James Gunn's version of the Bride resembles this Seven Soldiers version who first appeared in this issue. 17 copies sold for the high sale of 19.95 for a raw. At rank 18, we have Creature Commandos number one. We talked about this one. 32 copies sold. High sale of 54.95 for a raw. And the only non-DC book uh, on here <laughs> from icon uh criminal number one from 2006 um you know i love my red brew baker 21 copies of this sold high sale of 40 dollars for a 90 Ooh. raw copy how do you a 90 raw <laughs> and, i'm so confused yeah let's call them let's call them very fine plus yeah near mint minus um, and then Stormwatch 37 from 96 uh, rounds out the top 20. And I'm not sure what this one is. The first appearance of Jenny Sparks uh, that leads the first roster of the Authority. 17 copies of this soul with a high sale of 90 bucks for a raw. Okay. Good job, guys, for mining that announcement. The market has reacted, and DCU is ablaze. What else is ablaze is our sneak peek at next week. The whole reason you came over here. So follow Drew and I as we head on over and find out what's coming up in your local comic book shop. This coming Tuesday or Wednesday, we are starting in Lunar Distributions and seeing what's going to be there on Tuesday that we cannot miss. And we're going to start with things like Batman 131 and the second printing Jorge Jimenez. That's very nice. It's heartless, of course. Mm -hmm. Getting a cover. Um, Batman Beyond the White Knight finally ends. Um, <clears throat> some delays here, but what I'm hearing is the Murphy verse is alive and well, and expect a new volume. And we're getting a White Knight version of Superman, which could be interesting. Yeah, in this issue, Let's see what's going All on. All three there. covers are really cool. Yes, very much so. I like the uh, Batman. Uh, the Adventure Continues Season 3, the uh, cover B, the Daniel Warren Johnson, where it just shows that Batman has to do his own auto repairs on <laughs> the Batmobile. And he looks like he is not having a good time with that. Yeah, like all of us when we have to do our own auto repairs. Mm -hmm. Lazarus Planet Dark Fate, one shot. I don't know what's going on there. Can't tell. <laughs> um, now we have... Swamp Thing Green Hell. Again, this is issue two. With a nice shot of Constantine right there. <laughs> Since you can't smoke cigarettes on the cover anymore, we just have an operative smoke version of. Uh, ah, no kidding. Swamp I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Hilarious. All right. That was pretty lackluster there, DC. So let's see what we're getting from Image. Yeah. Oh, our brutes that you hate. Here. Hatred for art groups. <sighs> Penultimate 8 billion genies. We're getting close. We're losing not a lot of How people. How did you left. not stop at an Astro City trade? I thought you stopped at all Astro City trades. Just... Uh, well, it's just a trade. Okay, just checking. Um, what's going on here? Last Barbarians. That's the Haberlin book. That's right. Yeah, I liked that. Really you liked, liked that. it. You liked yep, it way more were. than I did. Just FYI, people. I'm leaning this way already. And um, Sin of Grace gets another installment of Rockstar and Soft Boy. If you enjoyed his other one shot. He's a good writer. He is. Torrent number one by Mark Guggenheim. 
this is about piracy? Yes. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. A brand new superhero universe. Oh, golly. So Michelle Metcalf is the world's most happy-go-lucky hero, Cracker Jack, until tragedy, tragedy forces her to cross the line from hero to vigilante. You love your superhero image books. I do not. Stop. <laughs> Grim hits eight from Boom. Uh, Dune launches. Well, that's a second print for House Har- Harkonnen. Mosley at number two. Good House of Slaughter covers. Yeah. There's the launch of your Masters of the Universe you're excited about. IDW giving us some TMT. Kyle, anything there? TMNT? Nothing there. Uh, Kevin Eastman's pretty nice. For 137. Doesn't do it for you, I guess. No, Alex Ross giving us some cool Fantastic Four covers. All right, I do like the TMNT covers. I'm sorry. I, don't want nah, I thought you did. I thought you might. Invincible Iron Man. Marvel Voices Wakanda Forever. Kyle, did you watch watch the new Black Panther? Nope, I gotta have it done. You told I told you I'd have it done by the time we went and saw Ant Man. So, oh, that's, that's right. still the plan. That's right. I have to. I have questions for you. Let me know. Ah, Murder World, Moon Knight. These are pretty awful. Um, <laughs> I got. This is one of those things where uh, they are average or below, but I'm gonna finish up the, out the string, and I don't know why. So I've I've violated my own rules. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. I just well, I I definitely want to read this one, of course, because of Moon Knight, and I, then I think I only have one or two left after that, so I'll probably freaking read those two. It's just not very good. Oh, Nightcrawlers, you were excited about this. Yeah. I don't know if any of the covers do it for me, though. Mm, yeah. They're pretty lackluster. Scarlet Witch was so well-received. It had it got a second. Have I told... Have I told Steve Orlando I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm sure he could use it again. I just, I just... This book is really good. And maybe it was just like the... Um, Issue after issue of mediocrity that he was pumping out that got out of his system. Yeah. And then he can do something good. Timeless number one. I love how they had to put 2022's timeless number one going for a <laughs> second print. <laughs> because there'll be another one. Yeah. Oh, uh, Lord. Who is the action figure, Star Wars action figure for 31? Do you know? The governor. From. No clue. I have no idea who that is. Does it even look vaguely familiar? <laughs> governor Co Bibble. Who the hell is that? <laughs> he is the governor of Naboo and a member of the Royal Advisory Council. So you will know him from the prequels. Well, okay. He's a prequel yeah. guy. All right. Another great Wasp cover for issue yeah. two. All four of those are nice looking. We have the, uh, from Dynamite, we have the Supercade Visual History of Video Games, age 1985 to 2001. All right. That's cool. The first issue was 1971 to 1984. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. This volume chronicles the next era of gaming history, beginning with the NES and including the release of the Master System, SNES, Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, Amiga... Game Boy, Atari Jaguar, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, Xbox, and more. That was my wheelhouse right there. Yeah. I didn't know any of the pre-1984 stuff, I don't think. You had an Atari 2600. Yeah, so if it ended there, sure. Yeah. But yeah, starting with the SNES is pretty good. But for 45 bucks, to have pictures of old consoles, I might be in. So this will be one that when I'm in the... Uh, comic shop i will be flipping through to see what it looks like yeah and of course they yeah. love it when we do that and if you pre-ordered it you'd, you'd got it for 20, it for like 25 bucks yeah 2250 uh kitsune shimitsu is a ronin uh, that's what that is all about from scout night walkers hits the second issue there's your quested yep 
It looks so much like the others. This is is this linked to the past? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fine line between rip off and homage. It's very true. Scorn from Keen Spot. We don't care much for Keen Spot, right? Their stuff's not really. Yeah, we've yeah, we yet to actually hit in my mind. They put out a lot of covers there though. Trojan gets a second issue. Some wicked covers. That Oliver Corpels, man, what's she doing? Man, I'm really tempted to do a second issue of Swamp Thing's Green Hell. I really like that a lot. <laughs> but then you kind of smash that with the, um, the whole smoking thing. I didn't even realize that they had banned that. I don't know if they banned it. It just it seemed like instead of making you know a big thing about him always holding a cigarette, uh, they've made the smoke just Swamp Thing. <laughs> yeah, I do like it though. Even if it has taken a year to come out from one issue to the next, guess I'm going to reward them. That's I believe I it was Miyamoto that said he was talking about video games at the time, but you know, a late video game is late once, but a, va- a bad video game is always bad, and that is still the same thing. With <sighs> How old is he? <laughs> He's the Zelda guy, right? Mario Zelda, yeah. Oh my goodness! So he's been around for fifty years making these things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's got to be pushing sixty or seventy. So what I'm trying to say is, if you got a delay, we'll understand. Okay. That being said, my pick is the Last Barbarian number one from Image Comics. I'm picking two Image books. Image is back, baby. You do that. You do that. I forgot about that one. That was a good one too. All right. But Drew, what is your pick of the week? Oh, I'm sorry. It was the um, Green Hell. Swamp Thing Green Hell. We are doing it and doing it and doing it well. And looking back, uh, we can see that uh, Swamp Thing Green Hell number one went to a second printing, so that bodes well for uh, number two. Possible. You know what bodes well for you? It's heading over to Patreon.com and finding comics for fun and profit, being part of the community, joining this Slack channel, hanging out, talking about all the cool things. Buy some uh, of that merch. Buy some of them T-shirts. They are pretty cool. We got or some dope stuff, if I do say or myself. Or coffee mugs or travel mugs or phone cases or shower curtains. You know, we got it all. <laughs> you name it, we got it. Uh, we appreciate you guys more than you'll never vote. No, we thank you. And for Drew and myself, see ya. As you know, our LCS is Cowabunga Comics, Lake Country, Wisconsin's best pop culture destination for new comics back issues, gaming, retro video games, vinyl, and figures. Give them a call, 262-569-9999. Check them out online at cowabungacomics.com or follow them on Twitter at Incredicow. Um, They are our LCS, and we utilize their deep discount mail order service to bring Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, closer to us. They'll take care of you. Tell them Drew and Kyle sent you. Say hi to Eric and James from us. If you need an LCS, you can't go wrong with Cowabunga Comics.